I came into town in a three and a half quarter, three and a half quarter ton truck called Betsy. It had been a milk wagon. I, when I came into town, I got a hold of a friend of mine that said to, you know, that to, for me to go down to Melrose because they were working hard to legalize marijuana. I said, that sounds like a place for me to be while I'm on probation for 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> See my probation officer twice a month, whether I need to or not. And we do, we hate each other from the beginning, but she could never violate me. Okay, so continue. So you went down there. So I, would, I went down there and they said, uh, Jack was on the telephone. The captain has heard that I was a good hearted little worker in the Melrose office. And me and Doyle, who ran the Melrose, so we were always banging out. He says, all you got is thoughts. It's action. It's getting paper done. It's getting in front of the getting people moving, seeing that they know how to get a good signature. So every signature counts. I says, and you're just so damn lazy. I'm not listening to you. And so we had like a heat thing. And then Jack heard about this. And Captain Ed heard about it. And Jack says, well, you know, I'd like to meet you. If you could kick that ass out and make, get the signature. You know, it's all about getting the signatures. He's motivating yeah. everybody to get signatures. Yeah. Good signature, not just crap. Yeah. Crap doesn't go nowhere. Good signatures go everywhere. Did he have the training video at the time? No. Or? Okay, go on. And so I, I went down there and I heard about it. It was on Melrose and, and Vermont in a really garish neighborhood where everybody was there. The gays were there, the high bisexual were there, the people were just doing shooting up on the corner. Can I just say what the, it was actually uh, west of, near Santa oh. Monica. Okay, that's probably it. Yeah. Okay, in case you that's want to it. go see Carry it. On. Okay, continue. continue. Yeah. It's fun, but we have to move it along. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyway, so Jack heard what was going on in the Melrose office. Yeah. He got him. He got a hold of me, and says, "If you come down, I says right now I just want to go to bed." I go, "Can okay, you know Jack's nice person? I've been up for you." Then he says, "Well." I'll see that you go home with a nice bag. <laughs> I'll see that you have a place to shit and shower by morning. I'll see that all your little needs. I said, Jack, you're pretty intense. I've only known you for 10 minutes on the phone, and this is telling me too much information. So I have to see either it's real or I have to call it bullshit. <laughs> Which way can you go? Because you know, Jack, he's a pretty dumb. Okay, he's a Jewish mother. They'll beat the shit out of you. Make sure you stay on the road, right? <laughs> and the right road is his way, not yours, but his way, because he knows fathers knows best. And Jack pretty much did. When you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. You either do what he wants or you do you're, you're, Yeah, exactly. Great motivator. Yeah. And it'd be really interesting. People have thought that they didn't know his wife and I were part of the household. One time, Vanetta and I came home, but Jack had 50 people in the house. You know, for women, that's two people, that's enough. <laughs> 50 strangers shitting in your trying to use all this time, hey, that goes crazy. <laughs> we're cooking for these strangers, and they're just smoking pot, not even offering this phone. Vanetta and I said, what is wrong with this picture? What's wrong, huh? Uh, and so I, we, uh, yeah, me and Vanetta went around and said, uh, we talked to these two different dudes uh, that were about <laughs> bouncers for us. They go, yep, they gotta go, now. I've asked them to leave for 10 hours and then they got to go now. So we got it all their little stuff, took them on the freeway, dumped them off in Ventura on the beach because I was just getting, getting, getting tired of these fucking fleas all over Jack just sucking out that money, sucking out that money and coming over with fucking, I says, you know what? You got to either pay your bill in full or you got to go. And everybody's being put out on the street that you, they buy, sell you yeah. weed. Yeah, I remember they that. And they're going to lose money too. And Jack said, somebody he wants to say, you, you, say you can't do that. I says, yes, I can. I'm his secretary. He's a brilliant man, but I'm not going to let assholes take advantage of him. I'm just not there. Yeah. I'm a business person. And when you say you're going to pay us money, no. You get what you pay for and you go on forward. That's the way the game goes. You were no, no more cretzies. No more. Yeah, Jack great. was the thing about ah. Jack. He was definitely big hearted. Big and heart of the man had, like I said, the heart of a Jewish mother. The succulent, the tetrodal chick, man, just squash him with her, with his brain. He squashed people with his brain. He's brilliant. I love Jack. He hated me being in the room with huh? him. It's like it was very difficult. Had it was a great misconception that we got together because he had always had people that just did what he said, and I would look yeah. like. No, you weren't Brenda. Like uh, I, I told you off the show. <laughs> Brenda right here was the only woman that ever didn't intimidate him, but made Juan Jack to be a good boy. But That's it. I said, you, you made Jack want to be a good little boy. Oh, yeah. you. I would well, ask me my advice, but he really didn't want it. it was like, but he still followed through when you gave it to him. I have. You know how, you know how I know that? He goes, we had a talk. And with Brenda, I think everything's going to be great.